Haven't we all seen a movie or a series in which the term nanobot is used and it seems like something out of science fiction? Or we hear someone mention a material that sounds almost miraculous such as graphene? However, this is not so far from reality and has its scientific support in what is called nanotechnology. The term nanotechnology is summarized simply in the understanding and manipulation of matter at a microscopic scale, more specifically at nanoscale. By nanoscale, we refer to dimensions between 1 and 100 nanometers, being 1 nanometer the equivalent of 1 billionth of a meter. To understand this proportion, let's give some examples. A sheet of paper is around 100,000 nanometers thick. A human DNA strand is about 2.5 nanometers in diameter. There are 25,400,000 nanometers in an inch. A human hair is between 80,000 and 100,000 nanometers thick. A gold atom is one third of a nanometer in diameter. On a comparative scale, if a marble had a diameter of 1 nanometer, the diameter of the Earth would be about 1 meter. How is it possible for someone to work with matter at such tiny dimensions? This is thanks to great inventions that took place last century. First, the electron microscope, developed in the 30s by German engineers Ernst Ruska and Max Knoll, using a beam of electron particles to illuminate a specimen, creating a highly magnified image. Electron microscopes allow much larger amplification than old light microscopes, achieving up to 1 million magnifications against 1500 of the others. The Scanning Tony Microscope, or STM, is another of several instruments that allow scientists to observe and manipulate nanoscale particles, atoms and small molecules. Its development earned its inventors, Gerd Binnig and Heinrich Rohe, the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1986. This instrument bases its operation on applying a voltage differential to a metal tip placed very close to a sample, causing electrons to jump that void due to the tunnel effect and mapping the resulting electrical current. On the other hand, atomic force microscopes or AFMs obtain information filling the surface by means of a mechanical probe which performs small but exact movements to allow for precise scanning. What makes working with particles at the nanoscale so special? When one works with something using the naked eye or with a traditional microscope, the properties of what one observes do not change. However, at the nano level, the properties of the particles change significantly with respect to larger scales, due to the so-called quantum effects, affecting their optical, electrical and magnetic characteristics among others. These effects are present at the macroscopic level in any material, but when reflected as the average of all the quantum forces that affect the millions of atoms that compose it, its consequences are not visibly noticeable. However, upon reaching these very small dimensions, that average no longer exists, and the effects of an individual atom or molecule are felt and reflected directly in a particle, and therefore in its specific characteristics and behavior. Consequently, materials that are reduced to a nanoscale can suddenly show very different properties compared to what can be observed at the macro level. For example, opaque substances suddenly become transparent, such as copper. Inert materials suddenly become catalysts, such as platinum. The stable materials become combustible, such as aluminum. Solid materials liquefy at room temperature, such as gold. Insulating materials become conductive, such as silicon. Another important aspect of nanoscale materials is the surface area. When compared to the same mass in a material in its bulk form, nanomaterials have a relatively larger surface. That can make such materials more chemically reactive, as well as affect their resistance and electrical properties. To understand the effect of the size of a particle in what refers to the area of its surface, consider a silver dollar coin. This coin contains 31 grams of silver and an area of 3000 square millimeters. However, if the same amount of silver were divided into small pieces, about 10 nanometers each, the total area resulting from adding all those pieces would be equivalent to about 7,000 square meters, or what is the same, the size of a soccer stadium. Being able to manipulate matter at these levels, as well as taking advantage of the special characteristics it shows, allows nanotechnology to provide many benefits and have applications in various areas, such as technology, industry, safety, medicine, transport and energy, among others. Nanoscale additives or surface treatments on fabrics can help deflect bullets, 
or resist wrinkles, spots and bacterial growth. Transparent nanoscale films for glasses, computer screens and cameras can make them water and residue repellent, anti-reflective and self-cleaning among other things. The nanomaterials are allowing to have washable and durable fabrics containing nanoscale electronic sensors and circuits, which are capable of monitoring vital signs, capturing solar energy, and collecting energy from the movement. Creating light cars, trucks, and airplanes can lead to significant savings in fuel. Adding nanoadditives to polymer materials used in various items, such as tennis rackets, bicycles, motorcycle helmets, or car parts, makes them light, stiff, durable, and resistant. The transistors, which are the basic switches that allow the operation of modern computers, are becoming smaller thanks to nanotechnology, which allows more speed and more memory on smaller chips. Ultra-high-definition televisions use quantum dots to produce more vibrant colors while being more efficient. Having flexible, rolling or stretchable electronics integrated to wearables, medical, aerospace and Internet of Things applications is possible thanks to semiconductor nanomembranes or nanomaterials, such as graphene. There are researchers who are working with nanoparticles to help deliver medications directly to cancer cells, so healthy tissues not damaged. They are also studying how to use nanotechnology to administer vaccines without the need for syringes. Better diagnostic and visualization tools have been achieved to detect ailments more quickly, as well as to give more individualized treatments at with a higher success rate. Additionally, they're looking for how to use nanoparticles to regenerate tissues and bone, as well as to develop nanobots that can release blockages of arteries, among other things. Nanotechnology is already being used to develop new types of batteries that charge faster, are more efficient, lighter, have greater capacity, and last longer. The technology can also be incorporated into solar panels to convert light into electricity more efficiently, which would allow for cheap solar energy in the future. The use of carbon nanotubes and membranes to be able to separate carbon dioxide from chimneys of power plants is being studied. The same nanotubes are being used in the wind turbine blade materials, so that they are longer, stronger, and lighter, thus increasing the amount of energy they can generate. Despite so many advantages and practical uses, nanotechnology has also some negative aspects. Putting aside the economic impact of its widespread use, the very detailed manipulation of particles and their properties gives nanotechnology a high potential for developing various types of weapons that can even become almost undetectable and extremely lethal, without taking into account the possible invasion of privacy to which we would be subject. Nanomaterials can release particles which, when inhaled, could cause adverse effects for both human and other living beings, and that, for the moment, are too small to measure and contain. Even so, we consider that the advantages of this technology are much more than the disadvantages, and that the great inventions of the future will be on a small scale. We end this video with a sample of the first film at the atomic level made by IBM to demonstrate the abilities that are available to manipulate atoms individually. If you like this video, please share it with your friends and family and subscribe to our channel so we can do more like this. If you want us to make a video on a particular topic, let us know in the comments. Thank you.